Hi, and welcome to this week's Life Lessons video. It's great to be back with you all. Is your inner critic out of control? Maybe your negative self-talk is hampering your happiness, holding you back and stopping you from reaching your true potential? Well, we're here to help. In this video, we're going to be talking about what really drives your negative self-talk, how the conversation you have with yourself powerfully affects your law of attraction, and most importantly, how you can take back control of your inner dialogue so that it becomes a force for good in your life. Welcome to our Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons series. In each episode, we answer your questions, reveal the powerful life lesson, and offer you lots of practical tips and advice to help you live in balance, harmony, and flow. Okay, David, so the question we've had in is, I can't turn off my negative self-talk. It's like a devil on my shoulder spoiling my life. Every time something good happens or I want to step out of my comfort zone and try something new, my critical inner voice starts nagging at me and casting a dark cloud over everything. I'm sick and tired of being like this. Can you help? I love these. I love these questions because they're so descriptive. A dark cloud, mm. a monster. <laughs> it's well, great. It's, it, Our clients are so great. They, it can seem very... Well, it's certainly very important and very uh, strongly affecting everyone. So when we say negative self-talk, David, what do we actually mean by that? Well, if you're not sure what that is, um, if you're unfortunate to wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning with a busy day ahead of you, listen to that voice. <laughs> when has that voice ever said to you, aren't you doing well? Tomorrow is going to be a great day. And by the way, you're losing weight. <laughs> it never says anything like that, does it? It moans, it groans, it creates obstacles. It tells you something's going to be much worse than it ever will be. Because this is the part of the mind that's created the separation that we, for a label, call it the inner child. And why we like to call it an inner child, and we've done many videos on this, because it acts just like an inner child having a grump, mm. moaning, groaning. Because you know why? One of the things, you know what? One of the things, it's much easier to criticize. It takes no skill to find fault. Think about it. You can criticize anything. Look at the greatest artist, the Mona Lisa. You can find fault. Anything you can find fault with because it's much easier to find fault. And then when somebody challenges you, then find more fault and might find more fault. And so that part of your mind goes into that mindset like an inner child, grumpy, gripey, don't like it, don't want it, don't like this. You know, you've had children, don't like this, don't taste nice. And they moan and moan and moan simply because it's easier. It, it, it's more familiar. And so that 3 a.m. mind that I call it is a very powerful mind, but it gives you the idea of what your mind will mm. do if you allow it. Can we just talk yeah. for a moment, Andrea? Because <laughs> I like to offer you uh, things that you can try. If you often have the 3 a.m. mind, one of the things to try is just by the side of your bed and your bedside table, have a pen and paper and write down what it's saying to you. Just write it down and then say to it, OK, my darling, I would always call that part of your mind a little pet name like darling, sweetie. OK, son. OK, we'll deal with that tomorrow. We'll deal with that at an appropriate time and train yourself to deal with these issues when it's right for you. Not on their time, because again, this is like so much like a child. This is why I love this analogy of the inner child. For those of you who have had children, when do the children come and ask you questions? When you're cooking, when you're doing something else? Mom, Dad, can you talk? They'd love to come in and impose on you. And this is how the mind works. It waits until it's got you. When you're tired. When you're tired. Or really busy with something else. When you've else. got a lot on for the next day. When your mind's full. When you're trying to remember something. And then it starts. Because it gets more attention. It can be in control. And that's what it wants. It wants that attention. It wants that reassurance. Just like a child. And that's why the analogy of the inner child. Not perfect, of course. And people can find fault in the analogy. Mm -hmm. Of course you can. 
But I tell you, I think it's one of the most powerful analogies to help you to stop the separation and come back into the oneness. And this is why this is a spiritual teaching. This is a spiritual teaching to bring you back into the oneness instead of having a separation. Separation so between what, David? The, the part of your mind that we're calling the inner child yeah. who criticised, moans, wants familiarity, wants things the way that it wants it. Wants, perf wants, wants you to be perfect, per perfect and the world to be perfect. And wants, and wants, and wants everything right in, in, in the way that it thinks so it feels it's familiar and it creates good feelings, it's in control. This is, the, this is what that part of your mind is wanting. And this it? is what the negative self, that's what's absolutely, motivating the negative self talk. Because that's easier, isn't it? It's much easier to criticize something. It's much easier to knock a house down than to build a house. Yeah. It's much easier. Mm. And so the child will go on the, well, you think that's good. Well, you're not perfect, are you? Well, look at them. Here's what we call CCJ. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it much easier? Well, look, you think thought thought you did well. You got eight out of ten. They got ten out of ten. They look look at their house. Look at their car. They're thinner than you. They're beautiful than their legs are better than you. You know, uh, their hair is better than you. Look look what their their, their, and so their what, children what, are better the than benefit? yours. What's the benefit? What's the payoff? Well, what does the inner child believe is the payoff for giving you? All this negative dialogue. Well, okay, great. There's lots of payoffs. <laughs> lots of payoffs. I just want to come to come to mind. You need to be driven to do better. You're a bit lazy, aren't you? You're not quite good enough, are, are you? And if I can drive you, if I can really inspire you, you will do even better. You may even reach perfection. Like Negative, mo payoff. negative motivation. Negative motivation. <laughs> Which the actually inner, doesn't work. Well, the inner child... Believe believes it does. it does. Yeah. Now, here's a great point. Yeah. Now, many people will say, well, negative motivation never works. I believe that. I believe spiritually negative motivation kills everything. Mm. It doesn't work. And you will sit there and nod your head. Ask your child. Ask that part of your mind whether it believes that negative moti motivation. Here's the complication. It doesn't like to be neg be no, negative or criticised. To criticise, you don't like. It yeah. doesn't like being criticised, judged, or compared. But it will judge and compare and criticise other people. How paradoxical is that? And this is why we do these videos. We try and make this easy. This is a very complicated, paradoxical <laughs> swinging pendulum thing that the mind does. It hate the inner child, hate being criticised, hate being judged, hate being compared, yet in a flash it will do it to, uh, mm. to other people mm. because it believes that protects it. Yeah. It believes that it elevates it. It's that So that's another, pa another payoff is another that payoff. if I criticise myself, then I will... It'll hold me back. It'll stop me from doing, putting myself into an unfamiliar situation or a situation where I might fail yep. or a situation where people may not like me or yep. people may laugh at me. So if I okay. criticize myself, it keeps me safe. But again, that does not work. Okay, so let me give you another payoff. Yeah. It'd be interesting to do a couple okay. of payoffs. We <laughs> yeah. often ask what, okay. what, what, uh, what's a payoff. So here's another payoff. It would be better if I criticised myself first and worst yeah. because if anybody else does it, then it won't be so bad, will yeah, it? Yeah, because yeah. I've already said much worse to myself. Yeah. So what everybody else says to me, I've already gone worse. It's crazy, It's crazy. It's crazy. But, but we these do are it. the we payoffs. All, but, we, but we all do this. I know. And, stop it. And it and it's, For goodness sake, stop it. It's, it's a, a nonsense. Yeah, it's, it, when I say it's a nonsense, that's what I mean. It's a nonsense. You, you've fallen for the trick, for the illusion. You've got to stop mm -hmm. it. I could give you so many payoffs. I, I could give you so many payoffs. Here's, here's another payoff. Wouldn't life be better if we were superior? Mm. Wouldn't it be better if I was a princess or a prince? <laughs> Yeah. Then everybody would respect me, wouldn't they? And nothing can go wrong. Nothing. I can't and put even a foot if they, wrong. Yeah. And even if it did go wrong, then nobody would point mm -hmm. it out to me because I'm a prince or a princess. Yeah. And then nobody would work it. So there's another pale. So you see, when you start to think about it, and this is what we try and do in these videos, actually, you've got to make the complicated uncomplicated. Mm. That's why we call these videos life lessons. You've got to learn that lesson. And this is one of the most important things, because don't 
think that understanding it is you've got it covered because you've only the Chinese can I give you this yeah. teaching the Chinese call it find it own it then you can change mm. it so find it is the golden thread from the headline feeling of yeah. the red light why 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 until you come down now come you down to the belief the, or the, the, the thought the belief, and then the belief the belief the underlining belief so the belief would be I I want you, to be in control. Or I want to be in control. I don't want to fail. Therefore, I'm going to criticize myself to stop me from doing this exactly. to fail. Negative self-talk. Exactly. Right. So that's the I belief. don't want to take responsibility. Here's another one. Here's another benefit. Yeah. I don't want to take responsibility. I don't want anybody else to say that I've failed. So if I blame the adult, then you're, it's your fault, so isn't the, it? So when you say the adult, you mean the, the adult the mature, part of the, you. Exactly. So if the child yeah. says, well, this is your fault, you've done it wrong, I knew you were going to do it badly, there you go, I told you so. Basically, the child blaming the adult, that's basically the child saying, told you, you can't take self-responsibility, you should leave it to same. other people. Yes. Okay. You've always been the same. No wonder we're in this mess. When has the inner child ever said to you, fair dues, I messed up there, I told you wrong. It's never said that yeah. to you. It tells you what, here's the paradox, here's the paradoxical thing. It tells you what you should do, and then when it goes wrong, it blames you for doing it. Mm. How crazy is this? Have a look at the reparenting video. I'll this put a is, link to the inner child reparenting video. This is why you have to be like a parent. It would be like your physical child coming in and saying to you, you're a terrible parent. And you go, well, they've probably got something in that, you know. I, I better live my life like I'm a terrible person. How do you think I should do it? And you're saying this to a seven or eight year old. You're asking them to run your life. Your child cannot run your life. Mm. You've got to bring it into a team. And equally, let me just say this before we move on. Your child is not a monster. Your child is not a kind of something that has to be killed. Or the devil or on your shoulder. De exactly. Yeah. I was just going to say that lady called, called. See, this is exactly why self-talk is so important. This question is so wonderful. I want to go through this question. Did you, did you hear what Alex just said? Yeah. This is what I heard. First time I've heard that question. She's calling the child the devil. Mm. Well, if you call your inner child the devil, guess how it begins to act? Yeah, like a true. devil. We're going to talk about the law of attraction. Mm. You're calling it the devil. Mm. If you say to your physical child, you're stupid, you're crap, I hate you, you're terrible. You think the child is going to go, right, I'm going to prove you wrong. But it, 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 it will it, go, well, if you think that, I'm going to, I'm going to if you think that's bad, yeah. you wait till I really play But it up. does seem like a battle you know it, uh, if it, when when your it, your self talk is so out of control when you allow it to be so out of control it's like a constant it can feel like a battle this and i guess so that would be battling your inner child and that's so such a wrong setup of a well, we, relationship with yourself isn't it exactly but we fall yeah. into this trap illusion it's like we just fall into it and then what i don't understand what i call it it's nonsensical we defend that situation instead of realizing well actually this has never worked this is never going to work. What do you mean when you well, say defend? Well, we, we kind of, we, we find a belief. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you where I spend most of my time with my clients. We get down to what we call the three core lies. I'm not good enough. I can't cope. I'm unlovable or I'm unworthy. And I say to them, like I say to you, that's nonsense. I don't believe that. Can you prove that to me? And they go, no, I can't. I don't, I don't know why I think, I think that. And then I say, well, why would you believe and think something you've got no evidence for, no reasoning behind, no nothing? And yet they, they go, well, I've thought it for a long time. And then they give me all of these, what I call holding on to it. Well, it's just a habit. Well, it's it. I heard yesterday, twice, two different clients said exactly, it's ingrained, David. Mm -hmm. what, what are you talking about? This is a choice. This is a belief. These are your beliefs. Find it. Own it. Mm. And then one client said to me, and I absolutely agree with her, she said, I don't want to own that because it's so embarrassing. It's so silly that I would think that. 
But I'm telling you, if you do not own it, you cannot change yeah. it. Because if you don't own it, it's not yours to change. You keep on blaming other people. Well, it's my mm -hmm. parents. Well, it's my dad. Well, it's my childhood. Well, it's my teacher. Well, it's the bullying. Well, it's this. It's that. It's the other. And what you're trying to do is to get them to change mm -hmm. so you will change. Stop that. It's your belief now. It's a wrong belief. Own it. I'm thinking crap. Stop <laughs> it. Yeah. And then yeah. change your belief. S and then mm. your life changes. And I know you all hate it when I do this. It can change like that because it's your belief. Once you own your belief, then it's yours. You can do with it. You can keep it. I can't stop you from keeping it, but you can change it all automatically. But this question is so good. When I heard this question that Alex read out, because, as you said, she's very emotive. She's wonderful. You see how creative Devil she is? Devil on my shoulder. Devil on my shoulder. my life. And because she's used to saying cloud. a black cloud and people are going, mm. oh, my goodness, isn't that terrible? Oh, I do feel sorry for you. Fancy having a devil on your shoulder. You haven't got a devil on your shoulder. This is nonsense. You haven't got a black cloud hanging over you unless you create one. And that's what you're doing. You are creating this to keep you into the familiar, to keep you into what you're used. And, and clients saying, go horrify. David, I really want to change. I really, I hate these self-talk. But you're doing it. You're the only one that can change it. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for some magical guru, some book, some self-help book, some video, looking here thinking I can change it, we can't. We can inspire you to change it. I can tell you the truth. You are awesome. You are divine spiritual being. What you believe is your responsibility. If you've come through a dysfunctional, difficult, abusive childhood. That's how amazing you are to get through that. Can't you see the facts in front of you? You've managed to m get your way through the most dysfunctional, upsetting, difficult, challenging, whatever word you want to put on it, but you've got through mm -hmm. it. Why would you want to go and make it create it for yourself? Here's something else. Do you mind me saying no, a lot of my clients will abuse themselves even worse than their parents or their child. Mm. They're harder on themselves than anybody is. They're more critical about themselves. They are more dogmatic. They are more stubborn. Mm. They are more judgmental. And then they say, well, how do I change it? It's like it's not me. And, and you've got to understand it is you mm. and you are the one that can change and it. I think, Sorry to talk so No, much. I think that the point you just made about the repeating patterns you know we can a, a lot of clients will acknowledge you know I was mistreated as a child or you know my parents mm, kind of scolded me or beat me up beat me up abused um, me but as you say that pattern of behavior now is is manifesting because you believe you're not good enough you're not worthy so through your self-talk your giving yourself the same abuse. Worse. But I, I think it's worse. Yeah. I've got to be honest. I think it's worse. I think what you're doing to yourself is what Alex has described. Mm -hmm. If you are that person, then you are doing worse than you ever experienced mm. as your child. But you are doing it. Yeah. So, David, I want to just be absolutely clear on the, um, the relationship between the self-talk the beliefs and then the red light feelings. So if we start right at the top, uh, for, for me personally, sometimes I can get a red light feeling, so an uncomfortable or painful feeling. And then I'll think, well, hold on a minute. Why, why, what's going on here? Why am I feeling like this? Why am I feeling bad? And then I'll think, well, that's because five minutes ago, I thought something bad about myself. Yeah. I was basically had negative inner dialogue with myself. I didn't consciously acknowledge it at the time, but now I've got residual red light feeling. So the, so the high level self talk at the top of the top of the tree, uh, sorry, the higher level red light feelings you may experience at the top of the tree come from negative self talk. Yes. Right. The, the neg or, or negative self-thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Negative self-talk, self negative talk, inner dialogue, things. negative yeah, yeah, yeah. Conversations, conversations with yourself. Yeah. You're the, saying you're lying to yourself. Yeah. You so are lying to the yourself. The negative self-talk 
comes from the inauthentic core beliefs. Yes. So if you get right down to the, the nuts and bolts of that, it is either I believe I'm not good enough, I can't cope, I can't manage, or I'm, I'm unlovable. They're, yeah. they're, they're what we call the three lies. Yes. So, so the, the hierarchy is the, the beliefs which we hold deep within our psyche, which are usually formed in childhood, yes. early years, either from picked up from our childhood experiences, our childhood learnings, parental teachings, teacher teachings, sibling teachings. We hold those in our core beliefs. They then drive the inner dialogue we have with ourselves. The inner dialogue then creates the red light feelings, yeah. if it's negative inner dialogue or if it's positive, authentic inner dialogue, we get green light feelings. Yeah. Yeah. So joy, bliss, contentment, happiness, satisfaction, peace, calm. Confidence. Confidence. But that that is the equation. Yes. Feelings, self-talk, beliefs. Yes. So, and it's the inner child which holds on to the beliefs. Yes. The, that trapped inner child from our childhood, yes. which is vocalizing and verbalizing the beliefs, the gripes, it, its kind of fears, its concerns, its striving for the payoff through our self-talk. Yeah, so it's the inner child that we're trying to give the life lesson to. So the inner child has set up a belief system in reaction, as Alex says, to childhood experiences or events or people. And so it, it says, as I said, I call it the vow, V-O-W. So it's experiencing something really bad, physical abuse, being beaten up, sexual abuse, being rejected, being let out, not being, and it says the vow, it must be me. There's something wrong with me. And when you have that vow in there, which to me doesn't make sense, this is when I say this is nonsensical, then going back to what I said in your question, you almost protect that vow that's why I call it a vow. It's not just a normal belief, it's a vow, really deep. You almost protect that like the crown jewels. And then from that, you start to build the structure of your life, your belief mm -hmm. system, your thinking, your filter, if you like it. And everything goes through that filter. Everything goes mm -hmm. through that filter every day. And the self-talk is part of that filter. The self-talk is that, the reinforcing. And, the, and also, would you say like the protection structure that keeps the vow, the misaligned beliefs, the lies in place? The inner child wants to keep them in place. It wants to hide those from the outside world. It doesn't exactly. want them exposed. Exactly. So the negative self-talk, keeping you safe, trying to make you perfect so no one criticizes you. That, that's all kind of part of the strategy. Exactly, that's what that client said yesterday. It's embarrassing. Uh, and it, well, I don't mm. find it embarrassing. I find it childlike. That's all it is. And mm. you can carry on believing that. I don't, that's your life. You, you are now taking responsibility for your, for your life. But why would you carry on believing something that is not fit for purpose? That belief, that structure that Alex has described, that vow is not fit for purpose. It doesn't match with reality. And then the child goes about the business of let me change reality. Let me change the external. <clears throat> let me let get people to deal with me special because they, don't, they should realize I'm very sensitive and they should deal with me like I'm a kind of an emotional, there's <clears throat> something wrong with me and they've got to deal with me specially because I'm highly sensitive. And that's got, if you go back, that's because that belief structure is faulty. And then the self-talk, as Alex said, I didn't realize, I think you said something like, I didn't realize that five minutes ago mm. that I had a bad self-talk. No, you do realize. You didn't challenge it. Yeah. Remember, your self-talk is a conversation with the universe. Everything that goes through your head, what you're thinking, don't just think it's going through your head and nobody <laughs> knows and it doesn't affect yeah. any, anyone because that self-talk is sending out a vibration to the universe. And this is what we're going to talk about is in a minute. This, to me, is one of the greatest teachings of the law of attraction. You are now going out of harmony. You are now not being truthful. You are now ignoring yourself. And this is the energy then that attracts into your life. As you think, so shall mm. you be. And in that, and that, this point about the law of attraction is so important because obviously 
a lot of us, just like the person who's asked the question, is aware that, <clears throat> you know, when I speak negatively to myself, when I have this negative <clears throat> inner dialogue, I end up unhappy, sad, frustrated, angry, et cetera, et cetera, all the red light feelings. So we have an, most of us have an awareness that negative self-talk is not a good thing and it creates red light feelings. But, but we don't own it. Yeah, but we don't. But the, the point I want to make is what we don't acknowledge is that it goes much Absolutely. beyond that. Now we're talking about the self-talk affecting your law of attraction. Yes. So when you talk negatively to yourself, not only does it create red light feelings within you, you know, words have a vibration, as David said. Words have a, a, an energy, a chi energy. You're, not only is it kind of making you feel bad, red light feelings, it's sending out that vibration to the it's universe. Attracting. The universe then, how the universe works in, in the teaching of the law of attraction, the universe has not got an intelligence. It doesn't think, well, she's thinking rubbish about herself. Just I a know, bad day. I know she's a great person. So, I, you know, I'm going to send her all the good stuff she actually deserves. The universe does not work like that. Mm. I'll put a link to our law of attraction video where we give this teaching in full. Uh, it's a great teaching. You, you should watch it. But basically, the universe matches. Just responds. It harmonizes. It harmonizes with the vibration you're sending out. So if I'm sending out negative vibrations through my self-talk, the conversation I'm having with, with myself, my inner dialogue, the universe is just going to match with that. And so, then I get more negative back. So think about it as a mirror. If you stuck your tongue out of the mirror, the mirror is not going to smile back at you. Yeah. And that's how the law of attraction mm. works. What you think, what you believe sends out the vibration and that is reflected back to you. And that's what you have to understand. Exactly what Alex says. This inner talk, this self-talk, whatever you want to call it, this inner thinking, it's vitally important. Do not believe it's just in your head and it doesn't affect anything. It affects everything. And there's the teaching. And that's why this self-talk is so powerful. If you look at the question, we did this last week. Have you got that question there yeah. again? I can't turn off my negative self-talk. Just that first sentence. We could do the whole teaching on that first sentence. Because is she taking responsibility? I can't turn off my negative self-talk. Then if you can't turn it off, who do you expect to parachute in and turn it off for you? It's like you're saying, I'm an invalid. I'm, I, I'm, I can't do it. It's just happening, David. It's just going on and I, I can't do anything about it. And that's just that first sentence there. You could, I could do a session with this lady just on that first sentence because that highlights everything. I can't turn off my negative self-talk. Well, what, what is it if you can't turn mm -hmm. it off? Why are you? It's like you're saying, well, I'm saying this. Yeah. It's like if I got my fist and punch myself in the eye and say, I can't stop myself from punching myself. Could you tell me how to yeah. stop, please? It's, it's, <laughs> but, it doesn't make sense. David, a lot. You know, what if someone comes to you and they say, look, I'm aware I've got a problem with my self-talk. I've tried I've tried the kind of self-help technique which says, well, you know, stop talking negatively about yourself. Start, you know, giving yourself positive affirmations. Start doing the kind of Louise Hay, look in the mirror, say, you know, rather than saying you're ugly, you're rubbish, you're no good, you're never going to find a bloke, look in the mirror and say, my, my goodness, you're beautiful, you're wonderful. You know, basically replace all the negative stuff with positive stuff. Go overboard, make it really positive, amplify it. You know, what if someone says, I've tried those techniques it and it work. doesn't work? Well, why, but why doesn't it work, David? Because <laughs> that's, that's one of the main techniques taught about how to deal with negative self-talk. Because you don't believe it. You don't believe it. I've said this before on these videos. It happened about three, four years ago now. We were doing a talk in, in Manchester, a big talk, and I was doing this, this talk, and a lady put up her hand and says, David, you're wrong about affirmations, because I'm a great believer in affirmations. I believe in affirmations, but they have to be the truth. So she said, I've been doing as the, the Louise Hay. I've been looking in front of a mirror every morning, and I look at myself, and I go, oh, my God, you are beautiful. Aren't you? Oh, you're getting more beautiful every day. Oh, I think you're radiant. 
I think you're gorgeous. I think you're awesome. And she said, David, I've been doing that every day for six months and I don't, it hasn't worked. I still think I'm crap. I said, I'm sorry to hear that. Can I ask you one thing? When you look in the mirror and say those things, do you believe them? And the lady said, no, of course I don't. Mm. That's my point. That's my point. And affirmation is extremely powerful, but you are affirming what you believe. If you affirm a lie, you're just making more confusion. Mm -hmm. So if you actually believe you're not good enough and then sit in front of a mirror and say, I am good enough, I am good enough, I am good enough, I am good enough, you might feel slightly better for a few hours or even a day or mm -hmm. even a week. But I tell you, that underlining belief comes through. It's like if you had a backyard full of weeds and you put paving slabs on top of the weeds. For a couple of weeks, it would look really neat, but then the weeds would come through. So what you've got to do is to say, why? She said, I can't turn off my negative yeah. self-talk. My question would be, why can't you turn off your negative self-talk? And there's a golden thread. There's the top. Now, why can't you turn off your negative self-talk? She's not here, so she can't a answer. But she's not taking responsibility. Why Why do you think? If you was her yeah. and I said to you, why would you not turn so, off your negative self-talk? Um, I guess my first answer would be, well, I didn't realise it's something that I have control over because when it happens, <clears throat> it feels very overpowering. And, and I haven't thought before that it's something that I can, I guess, like a light switch, and, you know, and, turn it on and off. It doesn't seem like I can do that. And Alex's role play yeah. is... I hope you was listening to how quickly she would have to go to the word, I feel. Yeah. You see, that's what all of my clients have to do. When you do the golden thread and you ask them why, I, I, I can almost count it. I count it as in my head. It's normally about five seconds before they use the word, I feel, mm -hmm. because what they want to do then is to take you back to your feelings. Which is at the top. Which is at the top. Not at the bottom, which is where we should be doing the work with the beliefs yeah. And there's the carousel of despair. Yeah. And that's what you're doing to yourself. Just as Alex role played, mm -hmm. I know that's not mm -hmm. her question. But once I asked her the question, so why did you do that? And then she had to go to her feelings or take you back to the feelings mm -hmm. and then take you back to the feelings. And we keep on circling, circling around. Yeah. Instead of why why do you why why do you negatively self talk? And then I think you said, Because I don't realise I do it. Okay, now you realise Yeah, why am I doing it? Stop it. Well, to role play further, because um, part of me does believe that I am not good enough. Okay. I am going to fail this. And so now, and now we're so talking now we about the beliefs. beliefs. So, and so you do. So you need questions. to do the work yeah. at the level of the beliefs. Yes. You can't. You shouldn't just talk about the feelings. Yep. You shouldn't just try to overlay negative no. self-talk with positive self-talk. No. You have to go and do the deeper core Absolutely. work on the beliefs. So if we're now talking oh, on the subject of affirmations, by the way, we've also done a, a, a full video teaching on that, on how to create affirmations which do work, which would be really useful to do and watch alongside this video because it takes it to the next level. I'll put a link to that video. But if we if we get down can to I, the beliefs, can I just say, yeah. just to clarify that the 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 video explains it fully. But a proper aff affirmation would would be on this: is every day I am going to try my best to take control mm. of my inner talk. Yeah. Well, that's the truth. So yeah. There's nothing wrong in that. Or, and then you can tweak the aff the affirmations or, as we described. Or would it be even? Uh, every day I'm going to do some self-inquiry work to yeah. look at the beliefs which are causing myself. So, so realistic, manageable. Absolutely. In, and in a, in a dialogue. Achievable. And that achievable. And achievable in a dialogue, not ridiculously positive, not certainly not carrying on with the same thread of negativity, but just something more in the woo way. That's what Absolutely. we're talking about. Yeah. So if the negative self-talk, because we talk about this pendulum, if the negative self-talk is at one extreme... The other extreme is going ridiculously positive with stuff I'm that, the you, best. I can do everything. that you I'm just perfect. actually don't believe, yeah. which is an equally inauthentic approach. The Wu way is, is being more moderate, more focused, more considered. realistic, more considered, more practical, and, and more easy on yourself as yeah. well, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. So... If we do the golden thread, ask those why questions and get down to the beliefs. Mm -hmm. 
So we've already said the beliefs are with the inner child that's holding on to them, protecting them, building this fortress of strategies, which include the self-talk to try and keep those in place. How, I guess, is it about then teaching the inner child that the payoff it believes it's going to get, the payoffs we've talked about from the negative self-talk are illusions, yes. it's not realistic? Yes, that's the life lesson. So we, we've called these series, I, I don't know how many we've done now, life lessons. So we're looking for the life lesson. So if, when you found the child, when you're speaking, having a conversation with the child, you're listening to what the child is saying, he's she, he or she is telling you what she's stuck on, what she believes. So she might believe that uh, the world's against her. She wants to be in control. She should be in control. And don't underestimate, th these are normally based on illusions, on what she thinks would be a safe place where everything is fine and happy and everybody, nobody argues and everybody uh, loves each other and everybody gets on. Uh, and and again, don't be confused. These could come from fairy stories. He, I say Disney World and people laugh, but these could come from Disney's movies where you get this idea of this perfect world where princesses and princes and mm. people are happy and they jump around. And But that is not reality. So the life lesson is when you get down to the child and you start to understand and build up a trust with yourself that you can address these issues, it's finding the life lesson. Finding, I give you one that I hear daily. It's not fair. Great life lesson. I would say most of my clients have an inner child who believes in such a thing called fairness. And then you discuss what fairness is. Who decides fairness? What's your definition of fairness? Who judges fairness? You have that conversation with the inner child. Here's the life lesson. It's like you're teaching them the lesson. Because if they believe there is something called fair and they have been treated unfairly, they mm -hmm. are stubborn. And this is one of your characteristics. A great characteristic is your determination. The child will turn it into stubbornness. And as I said earlier, they'll hold on to it like mm -hmm. grim death. And that's the work. That's what I would call the meditation. You're talking to your child. You're having a conversation. We've done a video on reparenting. Yeah. You're teaching your child. Okay, darling, let's talk about fairness. And that might take you a week. It might take you, I would say, 10, 15 minutes a session. Mm -hmm. Once a day, you talk about fairness. You listen to what they've got to say. Well, there should be fairness. I believe in fairness. And you have that conversation. And then if, you know... If you're a member of our free Facebook community, you share it in the community and everybody will jump in and put their point of view. If you're speaking to me, you, you put it in here or put it on the bottom of the video and we'll answer the questions. And so you start to build up that emotional education. And this is your spiritual development. This is what connects you to who you really are, that awesome person. But if part of your mind is stuck on this fair, unfair, just, unjust, you mm. can't reach your true potential and flourish. And you know what, David, just listening to what you said there, it strikes me that we spend so much of our time or we allow ourselves to spend so much of our time stuck on this on the energy of the negative self-talk carousel mm -hmm. because it's familiar, Absolutely. but it's a constant choice that we're allowing this Absolutely. to happen. Wouldn't it be a much better use of our time and our mental and emotional energy to rather than having a negative inner dialogue with yourself is to ha start having a constructive, positive, compassionate, loving, self-inquiry dialogue with yourself and your inner child. Think about you know, the amount of time you spend on an average day thinking negatively, thinking of worst case scenarios, negative outcomes, why you're not capable, why you're not good enough, and transplant that time into just having, starting to get used to having this this quiet, considered, loving dialogue with I'm, yourself. I'm just smiling because remember we were talking about um, the benefits that the inner child mm -hmm. sees. You see, because... What Alex just said is so powerful because the child loves the familiarity. Mm. Here's another word. He loves the known. She loves the known. What she knows. What's familiar, yeah. She knows it's not going to work, but in a way, it's her comfort blanket because she knows what's happening. And this is what one of my clients said to me. 
Okay, David, I understand this doesn't work. I'm accepting this now. This doesn't work. But it's known. I like it. What you're offering me mm. is the unknown. Yeah. I don't, you can't prove to me that that's going to be better than this. And that's right. I can't prove to you. And that's another advantage. The child would like to stick on what it knows, even if it doesn't work. Now, the life lesson is you've got to convince it that this is a ever diminishing circles, mm. you'll end up going smaller and smaller mm. and restricting yourself. Whole and restricting life, your whole, whole life. life. If you follow the inner criticism and this negative self-talk of the inner child, your your life becomes like the beam of light analogy. The beam becomes smaller and smaller, smaller, and, smaller and smaller smaller until you can only see that tiny, tiny piece in front of you. But here's the benefit. The child will say, yes, I know that. I agree with that. Mm. But the unknown, whoa, oh, <laughs> well, I don't know what that's going that's, to be. But David, that's so true for a lot of people. Exactly. Taking self-responsibility yeah. is unknown because they're just not used to doing it. But this, is, but this, is what, this is what I don't understand. Yeah. We live in the unknown. Yeah. This is reality. Mm. The reality is the unknown. We don't know what's going to happen today, tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to talk about in two minutes' time when Alex asks me a question. To me, that's who we are. Mm. That's the spirituality of who we are. That's the greatness. That's the awesomeness of well, who that, we that's are. That's the point of life. That's the point of life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Not going down this familiar vortex of doom where yeah. you just end up lying in your bed with a with a duvet over your head because you can't face life. That's not life. Life is learning. It's okay to get things wrong. It's okay. That's what life is. You get things wrong and you try your best. When you point out something that I've said wrong, I go, thank you. I've said that wrong. I'll change it. And we learn and we grow together. That's really what life is about. Life is about flourishing. Here's the Taoist teaching. Life is about reaching your true potential. It doesn't matter what your true potential is. You don't have to compare your a, a <laughs> potential. You could be doing, I don't know, line drawings. It could be running. It could be swimming. It could be working on computers. It could be anything. As long as you are producing green light feelings and being happy and living and flourishing in your potential, then the law of attraction mm. will attract more of the same. Yeah. That's what yeah. that's what it is. You just attract like-minded people into your life. That's why we started the community. We got over two thousand mm -hmm. members now, yeah. like-minded. We don't all agree. I don't want us to all agree. We should have different points of view because that's when we learn. Mm. That's when we listen to somebody disagree, put another point of view. Say, I don't know whether I agree with you. This is what I think. Other people come in. That's us flourishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think. Uh, again, a bit of a misunderstanding is, well, if I think highly positive things all the time, almost like artificial positivity, that's going to all of a sudden attract loads of positive stuff mm -hmm. into my life. But it won't if, you, if you've got the underlying belief that is still eroding that because it's the belief which is more powerful yep. with the law of attraction than any yep. artificial positive yep. self-talk that you try and overlay yep. like yep. that slab. The, it's the belief that's driving the law of it attraction. Will come so we do the deeper work. We have that self inquiry dialogue with our inner child. I've, I'll put I've put a link above to the reparenting videos, and I'll put a link in the video description as well. That that's great when we've got loads of time on our hands, and we yeah. can we can sit and have that conversation with ourselves. But most of us, day to day, we're at work, we're in the middle yep. of doing something, we're busy. And as you say, the yep. inner child comes up and goes, rah, 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 rah. At the worst time. Worst times. Most, you know, you just, it's just not appropriate to deal with it in the way we've talked about in that moment of time. So what do we do? Okay. The, the self-talk, negative self-talk is going. What, how do we deal with it? So this is where we have to build up truth, honesty, and inte integrity. We have to say to our child, that's a great point. I can't deal with it at the moment. It's inappropriate. I will deal with it as soon as we can. So it's your break or when you go home and in your meditation. This is what I would call meditation, the chance to focus and speak to your child. Where it goes wrong, we poo-poo the child. We say, oh, get away. I'm not interested. You're a devil on my shoulder. I can't. Oh, I've got a dark cloud. Or you follow it without question. Or you follow it without question. Thank you, yeah. Alex. And you don't deal with the lesson. Yeah. And that's where it goes wrong. Yeah. So you, what you say, if you say to that part of your mind, okay, I can't deal with that at the moment, but I will deal with it later, 
you have to deal with it later. This is integrity. Keep your promise. Keep your promise. Exactly, Alex. Thank you. Keep your promise. Have integrity. Be true to yourself. And now you're changing the energy around. So then if you can't get the answer, say the question is about fairness. If you can't get the answer, you say, okay, well, we've got the community now, or we write a question to David, or book a session, or whatever you want to do, and we work it through. And we work it through. When we address the child, we listen to the child. This is the key. This is why we call it reparenting. We listen to the child, and we answer the child's question. Make no mistake, these questions that the child is stuck with, the life lessons, can be very challenging. Mm -hmm. And they should be because that is what expands our spirituality. We don't just poo-poo them and say, oh, forget about it. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, oh it's, it's not important. It's vitally important. It's vitally Every client that comes to me and we talk about their life lesson, I hear this, oh, I know this isn't as important as, as other people, David. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Everything is important to you. You are unique. You are amazing. Everything is important to you. Do not compare yourself with someone else and think, oh, well, they had a much worse time than me, so mine isn't important. It is. It is. Mm. If it's important to you, it's important to me. And you've got to then deal with it in that importance. It means there's a life lesson being offered to you, and you have to now yeah. learn that lesson. Yeah. And that is, and then I can, if I'm doing it with you, then I can learn the lesson. Sometimes the beauty is, because I've been doing it for 40 years, I already know the lesson. I can offer it to you for you to consider quick, quickly. And then you can reject it or accept it. That's up to you. But everything is important. Do not ignore your child. Mm. That's, that's the key. Okay, so if the inner child is maybe not asking you a question, but... For a lot of people, the negative dialogue is just like, you know, you're rubbish, you can't do this, this is a disaster, you're going to fail, this is all going wrong. It's almost like statements. You, in the same way, you acknowledge the inner child's statements. You say, I hear you, we can talk about this later. Yep. So you're acknowledging, you're not saying, oh, God, what a load of rubbish, go away. You're mm -hmm. not trying to bury it down. Mm -hmm. You're also not saying, oh, yes, I agree with you. You're quite right. You know, mm -hmm. yes, this eight-year-old, yes, you're quite right. You, you're quite right about this important adult decision in my life. Yep. You don't do that. Yep. You, you, in a way, it's the, it's the stop it technique, isn't it's it? It's the stop it. You're, as the adult part of you, you're saying, stop it. Yes. You're then yep. dealing with the inner child by saying, I hear what you're saying, we, we can have this conversation, this dialogue later. And then later, when you it's must. appropriate, you follow through. You exactly. follow up. You sit down and say, now, what was it I was saying to myself? Almost you can write it out. Some right people now. find it helpful writing it out. Mm -hmm. And then you can do the, that deeper, the golden thread process, yeah. the questioning to get down to the belief and work on the life yeah. lesson. So that's when, when people kind of say they like it when I say stop it but that's what I mean you don't when you dig in a hole you don't keep digging no. you stop you say that's it stop and the important part of stop it is you have to go and return to it as quickly as you can yeah so that part of your mind knows it's going mm. to be addressed you don't do what a lot of my clients do think well I got through that then yeah that, you know that's, uh, that's stop started, it the, and, then, know, and then and then we can forget about because it because it doesn't go mm. away it just comes yeah. back more and then the next time guess what happens the child goes well I'll scream louder now <laughs> yeah I'll scream louder because you did nothing Nothing's last time nothing has changed yeah you might have dealt with it in that very moment, yeah. but nothing's changed with the beliefs. Absolutely. Nothing's changed yeah. with the inner child's point of view. Absolutely. Okay. That's a great teaching. Great. Well, thank you, David. <laughs> well, I hope that's given you plenty to think it's about. It's a good subject. That was it's, a good it's subject. It's a great yes. subject. Mm -hmm. I know it's something that you can relate to. Please comment below on your own experiences. You know, if your inner child is running you right or your inner dialogue is out of control, share your experiences and let us know whether you think any of the techniques we've suggested in this video are helpful for you. Or suggest your own. Or if you've got a better one, own. let's share them. If yeah. you've got a better one than, than, than we've suggested, mm. then share it. So as you know, we produce videos every week and publish them on a Sunday. So if you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you're interested in working one-to-one -one with David on the inner child work or any of the issues we've described today, I will put a link in the video description below so you can learn more about David's video call sessions. We look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.